Hi guys, I'm Kasia, welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times to discuss books and horror. So today I'm here to let you know some of the March book releases. It's coffee time! So the month of March comes packed with releases. We have middle grades, we have YA, we have adult, there's a lot of like short horror story compilations and my list is quite long today. We have a total of 32 book releases so I'm not gonna be able to go into too much detail into each book because otherwise I'll be here talking for hours to you guys. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly let you know which books are coming out, when they're coming out, and roughly what they're about. First we have a really short read. It is novella length, but it includes many like little short stories. So it is called Oos Little Bursts of Body Horror by Ruth Ann Evans, which is the editor. So because the title already says it's body horror, you know what you're getting yourself into. So if you're a fan of body horror, this might be a nice quick read for you. Next we have a horror book that presents us the question is anybody ever alone and that book is called illusions of isolation by brennan lafaro so when a young man's wife goes on a weekend trip he stays home alone but then he starts hearing certain noises in the attic and he doesn't know if it's you know just his imagination or if he's actually not alone. Now, apart from this, we also have other stories. This seems to be another story compilation in which the author explores the different types of isolation, but within the horror spectrum. The next one is Mother by Soja Stage, and this is horror thriller. Now, I just did not vibe with the author. I read baby teeth when it came out and i was really excited but it was definitely not for me so i have not picked up anything else by her um and i know some people really enjoy her thrillers but i feel like it's just not for me i think this is a claustrophobic psychological thriller about a woman that is basically confined to live with her mother during quarantine so it does touch a recent topic that we've all been through um, so keep that in mind if you go into the book if you don't want to read at all about that topic but like I said I'm not really interested in this one um, I feel like this is not gonna be for me but maybe some of you guys are excited because you've read other things by the author and loved it we have another compilation of horror stories this time by the same author we have Every Woman Knows This by Laurel Hightower. These are 20 horror stories about threats that women face. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how she combines, you know, probably, you know, experiences from women and threats and fears that we all have with horror. Now, the next book has been said is going to be for people that enjoyed Jacob's Ladder, also uh, Stephen King's The Dead Zone and also The Hunting of Hill House. So if those are things that you enjoy, you might like this one. The book is called A Man Among Ghosts by Stephen Hopstaken. This is a book about a man that after surviving a near-death experience, he feels himself being hunted by ghosts in the new house that he's currently renovating. Next we have The Curator by Owen King, and this is not particularly horror, but it is fantasy with some horror it's probably just a dark fantasy and yes owen king is stephen king's son so i will be picking this one up i'm just really curious to see his writing style because i have never read anything purely only written by him i am intrigued about this one because it is about a woman that wants to find out what happened to her brother after he died he wants she wants to know where he went um, so she kind of starts investigating, you know, places he used to go to, where he was seen last, things like that. And there is obviously the talk here of museum. And I would love for the characters to explore the insides of a museum. Maybe I'm asking for too much. I don't really know what to expect from this book, but I am excited to dive into it. Now the next book is part of a series that I was not really aware of and that is the Remix Classic series. So the next book in the series that's coming out is called My Dear Henry, a Jekyll and Hyde Remix by Kellen Byron. So this is going to be a YA historical fiction 
retelling queer horror so i love the fact that they take you know horror classics and they are giving them a spin um retellings for me are either a hit or a miss but i do love the concept of redoing dr jekyll and mr hyde so if you're in the mood for a ya queer story about victoria london and you don't mind retellings this one might be for you the next one is actually a book that is being republished but i thought i would mention it because the author got popular not long ago with one of her books and that is Catriona award when the last house on needless street came out it created a lot of hype and i feel like deserved because i really enjoyed the book so they are republishing one of her books i believe from 2015 the book is called the girl from raw blood and this is horror gothic historical fiction so if you're looking for more by the author and you love gothic fiction this might be one that you want to add to your tbr the next one has a weird genre combination it is called monstrillo by gerardo samano cordova hope that was all correct and it is horror magical realism i don't believe i've ever read a horror magical realism book before so i'm already intrigued about that mix this is the author's debut novel and i believe it's the story about a boy that turns into a monster that then turns into a man i'm not really sure what's gonna go on in this book to be honest but like i said i'm really intrigued about this thing with horror and magical realism also seems it might be kind of like related to a folk tale from mexico so that is something that i'm really really interested in i love to see folklore from other countries that i'm not familiar with so if you love some folklore stories this might be one you want to check out now we have middle grade paranormal horror and this author is releasing two books this month so the first one is this middle grade paranormal and it's called what stays buried by suzanne young this is her first middle grade book so i'm really excited to see what she did here and this is kind of like a coming of age story also a ghost story paranormal so i'm just really excited i think the cover is really cute so i will be picking this up as well the trees grew because i bled there by eric la Roca. this is a compilation of stories by eric you guys know I really enjoy his writing because I feel like it's quite a unique take on horror. They are all quite disturbing tales. They, for the most part, involve some body horror. So just keep that in mind. I do have this one on pre-order, so I'm gonna be reading it for sure in March. Hopefully everything gets delivered on time, but this is one of my most anticipated releases for March. The Wand Ad Killer by Anne Rue is another one that I have on pre-order, but this one is actually a re-release as well. Uh, this one, I believe, came out in September 1983, and this is a non-fiction true crime story, and I feel like it's self-explanatory because of the title. It's basically a serial killer that made use of the want ad sections probably from newspapers because this is from a long time ago and he used those want ads to lure females and then you know torture them kill them all of that so i have never heard about this story before at least not that i can remember so i'm really curious and interested to see what happened next we have a book called this one's gonna hurt by cody j thompson so we have five friends, we already love this, <laughs> that are on the way to a music festival and then they have a technology issue, which is something that can happen nowadays, and that is their electric car basically stops running. So now they are stranded in the middle of the desert as they were trying to get to this concert. Obviously, they are looking for a charging station somewhere in a parking lot or whatever, but they're also going to encounter some evil. So this is what I'm here for. I love it. A group of people get stranded somewhere and, you know, shit hits the fan. Love it. Our next horror book is called Dark and Lonely Water by Grim Reynolds. The story follows a woman that has to return to her hometown because she needs to write an article about some strange drownings that have been going on in her hometown but she doesn't really want to do this job. She has to. She returns to her hometown and she's really creeped out about it because these drownings, the more she investigates them, 
the more she remembers things from her childhood. The next YA horror thriller is actually a book that I believe it has been released in some places already in January 2023. For some reason it's been released here, at least in the Netherlands, now in March and it's a book that I've been meaning to pick up. I saw it being announced already in the um, Yog London and the cover caught my eye, the title caught my eye, so I wanted to pick it up. So. This one is called This Book Kills by Ravenna Guron and like I said it's a YA mystery thriller at a boarding school. We're in a boarding school, there is a murder in the loose, that is all I know, I'm really excited. I know that the first pages include like a map and everything of the school and I'm ready for this murder mystery, I'm so ready. I hope it's going to be as intriguing as I expect it to be. Our next book is Adult Horror and it is The Street Between the Pines by J.J. Alo and I think this one is going to be a creature feature. We follow a veteran that after one of his neighbors gets murdered he decides he needs to investigate, try to figure out what actually happened. And we all know when you start investigating this type of stuff you're gonna put yourself in a really really hairy situation. Now since he's a veteran he already is dealing with PTSD, with nightmares, with all of those things plus now we add the factor of this new thread, uh, this new thing that has killed already his neighbor. Which leads me to believe this book might be a little bit on the psychological side of things so if you like psychological horror this might be worth checking into. Another book that is getting a later publication here, um, so I think here in the Netherlands it's not coming out in March but in most countries it is, so I'm gonna mention it, and that is Piñata by Leopoldo Gaut and this is horror fantasy. The pitch says a head full of ghosts meets hereditary. Now I loved A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, it's a book about an exorcism and I absolutely love Hereditary which was Ari Aster's debut feature film. Like. You need to understand that was his feature film debut, like such an amazing horror movie. Um, so I'm so intrigued because these are also quite different concepts. I don't want to spoil Hereditary for you guys but it's quite unique as well. We have a woman that returns to Mexico to help with the restoration and the construction of a building which is or was originally a cathedral and it's now being turned into a kind of like a boutique hotel. But people in Mexico are treating her like an outsider, she's also there with her kids. So at some point she's had enough and she decides maybe it's best if they just leave. But back in New York one of her daughters is starting to act strange. So here comes the question of all questions. Did she come across something in Mexico? Did she bring something with her? Is something inside of the kid? We'll have to find out. The next one is a bit different. It is a queer science fiction horror novella. So it's a quick read for you guys. And it's called Feed Them Silence by Lee Mandelo. I know it deals with some sort of experiments with animals. They're basically trying to figure out if we can decipher what animals are thinking and if we would even be able to kind of see through the eyes of an animal. Um, so probably one of the experiments is gonna go wrong. <laughs> it's mostly what happens when you are doing these kind of things. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this concept to be honest because I've always been intrigued also about, you know, knowing or will we ever have any kind of technology that allow us to communicate with animals? We'll have to see. Next we have a book that deals in some way with the occult, so maybe that's something you're looking for, and it's called Hell on High by Michael Clark, and this is just adult horror. We have a 19-year-old Brazilian girl that is trying to run away from an occult overlord, like hello. So while she's running away from this person she meets somebody else that has a mission and that is to climb the Everest. So we will see what happens here. It sounds quite interesting, um, quite an interesting concept. You start running away from someone that is supposed to be dangerous and then you end up climbing the Mount Everest, like quite interesting. And next we have more short horror stories. We have now Suburban Monsters by Christopher Hawkins. This one seemed to be more grounded in reality and it's more about things we don't know about the neighbors and stuff like that, secrets, so it's more around familiar situations. So these are the type of short horror stories you can expect here. Moving on with another adult horror, we have Lead Me to the Dark by James Twyman. I believe this is about some sort of ancient um, race that 
um, was always kind of lurking in the dark as humanity moved on and, you know, we started evolving. And then some archaeologists make a discovery that awakens this old race, old civilization. We all know when you start digging down on the earth, there are some things that are better left uncovered. So this might be one of those cases where we either, you know, uncover some dangerous race that used to roam the earth before we came here, or maybe we just release some ancient evil. And now we have yet more short horror stories, you guys. We have Macros Abbey and other stories by Sabrina Murray, and these ones are going to be gothic horror so if that is what you're looking for this might be the collection that you want to get this year the author has been praised for her other gothic you know novels so now she comes with these short horror stories i particularly have not read the author before but if you have you can get excited for more of her stories next we have a book that seems to be a direct sequel to children of chicago by cynthia pelayo so this one is called the shoemaker's magician and this is a horror thriller now i did read children of chicago and i enjoyed it but it was not exactly what i had expected it didn't end up being for me for my personal taste as good as i expected it to be so i don't think i'm gonna be reading this follow-up but for all of you that love that first book you can get excited for more i think this one is also following the same path as the first one where there's a serial killer on the loose there's an investigation so it's kind of a little bit of that same thing um yeah and it's a horror thriller moving on with a book that sounds quite interesting i just love the title it's called the sum of your flesh by Beverly Lee, like that title, sold. Our main character lives in the woods. He wants to be isolated from the world, 100% can relate. So he is living his happy, isolated life away from society. Love that for him. But then his world is shaken when his brother dies and he has a lot of questions on how and why and he's gonna need to investigate further. So he will have to return to some places that he hasn't been in a long time to try to figure out what happened to his brother. And moving on, what do we have guys? You guessed it, more horror short stories. We have Abnormal Statistics by Max Booth III and this is an author that I have read a couple of books from and he is well known in the indie or underground horror community um, and this is the first time that he is publishing short horror stories so I'm really excited to see what he does with a shorter format. I have read some of his novels um, and I have enjoyed them so I'm curious to see what he will do with short little tiny pieces of horror. Next we have a book that has a common story for a horror book but it is another one of those tropes that we just enjoy and we cannot get enough of and the book is called The Seething by Ben Monroe. What do we have here? We have a family that is trying to move on so what do we do? We move. That's what people do in horror movies. They move to a new house, they're looking for a fresh new start, we don't know sometimes we don't know the reason why they decide to do that but what we do know for sure is the moment they start settling in, in that new safe space, safe space, things are gonna go really, really bad. We don't know if it's an ancient evil, if there is a serial killer. It's mostly something paranormal, but, you know, even though we kind of know where these stories might be going, we keep consuming them because they're just fun. Now we move on to another horror adult book called The Broken Places by Blaine daigle so this is the story about someone that inherited the parents old cabin in the woods and he's not very excited because that is kind of like a place that it looks really poor it has not been like taken care of for a long time there's nothing there left and you know but at the end the the guy is like you know what it's actually not a bad thing i've had a really bad year so at least let's try to make the best out of the situation he of course moves in and realizes there is something really wrong in these woods and probably also something really wrong with the animals so intrigued interested love we love an isolated cabin in the middle of the woods we just love that scenario. Next we have a book with another really interesting title and that is Chlorine by Jade Song and this is horror fantasy contemporary queer fiction. So 
a mix of genres here. This is supposed to be a combination between a dark horror tale and a coming of age story. I do love a good really dark coming of age story so this one might be one that I need to check. It's basically also talking about all that we are being put through by society and social media and the pressure uh, when we are growing up and how our bodies look or don't look all of that so I'm really intrigued about this topic and I'm really curious to see how they integrated the darkness or the horror in such an interesting current topic. Now we're moving to YA fantasy horror and this is one that I've been really excited about because vampires. That's it. That's the pitch that I needed. It's called In Nightfall by Suzanne Young. So she has a middle grade and a YA coming out in the month of March big month for the author. They say this book is The Lost Boys meets Vampire Slayer. You guys know I love both. The Lost Boys is one of my favorite vampire movies. I've always loved Buffy so I am so intrigued about these. I think Amy McCall has already read this and thought it was great so I just cannot wait. Next one is another one that I'm excited about. It's the new release from Victor Laval. It's called Lone Women and it is horror historical fiction. This is one that I'm gonna try to get as well because I would love to read this and review it for you guys. We follow a woman that carries a trunk with her at all times but this trunk is closed because when it's open people tend to disappear. Like I'm already so old with this story I need to know what's happening. So something that our main character calls her sin is basically with cause the death of her parents. We don't know exactly what happened. We are in 1914. I'm just so intrigued about this one. I am hoping this is going to be quite unique and original. So that's also why I am partially so excited for it. Also, I've never picked up anything by the author yet, but I've been meaning to. So this might be the one that I finally end up picking up. Next, we have A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. This is horror gothic fantasy. Now, when it comes to this author, I have read one of his previous books before and I am really sad to report that it was just not for me. The writing style, the way the story was, you know, presented, it was just not for me. I think a lot of people love the author and love the way that he writes, but it's just not me. <laughs> Um, so I don't think I'll be picking up more things by the author. Normally I like to give authors a second chance but I have so many things that I want to read that I would rather explore a new writer than read something by an author that I already know the writing style doesn't really vibe with me. But if you really enjoy the writing style of the author and you love horror gothic fantasies this might be for you. If you've never read the author before please do give it a try because I know many people absolutely love the author but in this case it's just not my vibe. And last but not least we have a horror thriller called Games for Dead Girls by Jane Williams. Another title that I just love. This one is supposed to combine some grisly urban legends with some dark secrets so I'm already on board here honestly. So two girls, I believe they are 11, that meet and one of them has an abusive father so the girls are trying to perform a ritual to get rid of the abusive father which you know kudos for them and I am really intrigued about this one. I am having so high hopes for it because I love when thrillers go really dark and it is borderline horror so this might be one of them and I am really excited. Alright guys, so these are 32 books coming out in March. A couple of them were re-releases, um, so keep that in mind. And a couple of them maybe came out earlier or will come out later where you leave. Sometimes, you know, publication dates might vary depending where you are. But these are all the ones that I could find. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the list. There was probably something for everybody here, hopefully, because there was a really mixed bag of things this month. Um, so I'm happy that I was able to find so many releases to give you guys multiple choices. Probably also not great for your wallets, but trust me, my wallet is also crying. <laughs> Alright guys, so let me know if there's any other March releases that I didn't talk about and if there's any March release that is for you one of your most anticipated releases of the year. Let's talk about it in the comments. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I hope to see you all in our next coffee time. Bye!